What is going on YouTube? This is Kevin, Red Tank Midnight, whatever you want to call me. And this is my Samsung Fascinate, which is the Samsung Galaxy S1 running Honeycomb. Now I got this link from Roots Wiki and I just uh, flashed it right to my phone. Um, the flashing process is pretty straightforward. However, if you're not familiar with flashing phones and um, getting yourself out of a tough situation using Odin, I do not recommend doing it. Um, it's a lot to do if you're unfamiliar with it. Uh, I'm not gonna bore you with details. The links will be in the description. I'm gonna get right into the heart, right to the soul, right to the meat and guts of ice cream sandwich. So the first thing, is a new lock screen. Um, as you can see right here, it has the time. Um, it has a little thing that you see from Honeycomb where it's kind of a circle. And if you drag it to the right, that unlocks it. Drag it to the left, it takes you straight to the camera. Um, it sort of attaches itself when you get near it. So you can do it with your eyes closed pretty easy. Um, especially when you just reach in your pocket and doing it. Um, you just go right here, straight to unlock. And then you are greeted with your home screen. Um, the home screen is pretty much standard. There, there are five screens. Um, has a little indicator at the very bottom when you flip between the screen it lights up a, a, a bluish color um, the Google bar is at the very top and it's stuck at the very top it's not going anywhere and there's no way to move the Google bar um, to the right of the Google bar has the search menu as it always has um, and that's it at the very bottom you have four um, spots for icons and folders um, you can move these all around. You can do whatever you want with them. Doesn't really matter. They're totally up to you. You can have none there. Just the uh, just the icon to go to your app drawer. You can do whatever you want there, which is really really cool. Um, and you can throw folders down here. So for example, um, I have this folder right here. It has the browser, Pulse, Gallery, Market in there. Um, I have that actually in my bar, and I can just click that to access it really quick. Click here to rename it, and uh, the world is uh, a better place. I can't type. Okay, you get the point. So to make a folder, you basically just drag icons together um, and it makes a folder. So we're gonna move these icons out. So basically you go this to this, makes a new folder, simple enough. You can actually drag a folder into a folder, kind of like Inception. I lied to you. Okay, you can't do a folder into a folder. I thought you could. I'm just a big fat liar. Oh, you can do you can do from the folder into a different folder. That's exactly what I meant. Anyways, moving on. The app drawer is pretty simple. Um, you go left to right, has a 3D animation between the two. Um, if you go over too far, it takes you straight to your widgets. You can click your widget right here and then decide where it goes and drop it wherever. Very cool, very straightforward. It works as intended. Um, there's a quick launch to the market right here, top right. And that's about it. Uh, my camera isn't that good, just to be honest. So you may see some streaking and things like that. That's just my camera. It's not indicative of the software or my phone or anything like that. It's just the way my camera is. So we're gonna have to, have to bear with it here a little bit. I want to stress how fast this is. This is running very, very quickly, especially for just a single core, one gigahertz processor. Um, the newer phones are gonna be dual cores, 1.2s, 1.5s, and so on and so forth. Um, this is running very, very smooth just for what it is. Um, everything is pretty quick and it is snappy, and I'm excited to see when the newer phones come out how much faster it's going to actually run. Um, the browser runs a lot better. Um, the browser looks really good. Now I'm just going off 3G connection from Verizon, and as we know, um, 3G connection from Verizon isn't the best connection. So we're going to head over to a website that I go to often. We can just do ESPN.com. And this is a, I just flashed this uh, ROM back on here just about a half hour ago. So this, these sites aren't cached or anything like that. So it loads up pretty quick. Get out the way. There you go. Nothing spectacular. However, it's, it's the way, it's the way the web should work. It's just very, very quick, straight to the point. When you scroll down, the, the bar goes away. You scroll up, the bar comes back. Um, there's different options where you can do um, thumbs control and things like that. I'm not getting into that. I'm just going over the quick highlights, the quick overviews of it. All 
All right. So we have two tabs open. You kind of go between the two tabs like that. Really cool to see uh, all your websites that are open and things like that. It's really quick. Um, as we saw before from Honeycomb, when you uh, go to the switch icons button, and um, actually I don't have that right now because I'm running on a phone that does not have switch icons. So I hold the home button down and it brings us up. These are your, your last used icons. And if you want to close, uh, you know, close this icon or close it from being here, it's not a task killer. It doesn't actually close the app, but what it does is it just gets rid of it out of this view. So you can just drag it to the side and it's gone. Drag it to the side and it's gone. It works really good. It works as intended, um, but the app does not close. Contrary to what other people tell you, if the app closed, then it'll sign me back in the talk. But talk was already signed in, didn't sign in. So it does not close the apps, but it's a really cool way of uh, just cleaning up your apps and things like that. Um, as we all know, task killers does more harm than good for Android, no matter what people want to argue with you. All right, the phone is uh, pretty standard. Um, missed calls, calls, and, and you know, you have your uh, people icon, which takes you to phone numbers and recent callers and frequently contacted people, and also, um, you know, your favorite contacts. Very simple. Now, it does not have T9 dialing, which is disappointing. It should have the T9 dialing. Um, I don't see why it doesn't have that. However, it's not there. Um, hopefully, it will be added or it's a hack to get it or anything like that. Um, the widgets are flippable, kind of like what you see with Honeycomb once again. You can go boom, 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 boom for the widgets. Um, if the widget supports that. Um, the SMS app, pretty straightforward. Um, has uh, looks like go SMS sort of and uh, the conversations show up right there very straightforward there's nothing it's not much to it to be honest um, it just seems like it's really polished and overall just works really well um, the Gmail app is uh, very very similar to what we've seen before except for the colors pop a little bit more in my opinion and uh, just it just works overall better um, you can search while offline you can search um, back you can set your dates you can it's by default it's 30 days you can go back to 90 days if you want and uh, for searching so you can search through objects and things like that um, once again I just can't get over how fast everything is and the speeds are just really really good and everything seems to be really really snappy um, Google Music is what you expect from Google Music it had a little bit of changes um, however these changes can be found in the newest version that you get from the market anyways um, but I mean worse is expected as the music and you just click it and go straight to the song um, just has a little user interface tweak where it has the market right there so you can you know buy new music if you want um, straight from the Android market Nothing really pops out as, you know, like, wow. Except for just overall how everything is running and overall how just things are, are slicker and, and, and quicker. Um, in my opinion, there's nothing out here that's gonna make you jump out of your seat in excitement. Um, but there's really cool things in that it really does, you know, add a whole new layer to Android and also could get some people to get, uh, you know, get you with the program. Um, the camera camera app is uh, it's pretty cool um, you have your camera you have your options um, you can do all the stuff you can do the scenes the different flashes you can use the front camera or the back camera I only have one camera um, you know things like that it's just a really standard camera camcorder on this ROM does not work there's nothing honeycomb does just on this ROM that I have that's uh, put on the fascinate did not camcorder does not work but this panorama camera which would be kind of tough to show you because I'm such a, in such a small room right now. Um, and also, you can edit pictures on the fly. So, all you have to do is uh, click on your picture. Um, let's go to a different picture. So, here's a picture of me inside a Ford Field. Come on. Okay. Me inside a Ford Field Lions game. Um, you can just do menu, edit. You have different things you can do. You can do uh, straighten, where you can just kind of tilt the photo, zoom in, zoom out. You know, just different stuff you can do like that. 
Um, you can add a black and white hue to it, a sepia tone, saturation, warmth. I like it really warmth. <laughs> um, things like that. So just a really cool basic way to edit your photos on the fly. Save. And then you can share these photos out with your friends and Google Plus and Gmail and all those good ways to share photos. You know, like I said, nothing groundbreaking, but it's something that is nice to have on the fly. Um, you know, you can you can edit red eye, you can take the red eye out, you can do a lot of different things. Um, the camcorder does have live effects, however the camcorder doesn't work now, but it um, has live effects where you can make your face real fat, you can make your teeth real big, your nose real wide, you know, whatever you like to do. Um, that's built in as well. Um, Google Talk is just more refined, it's just a cleaner look. Um, bigger icons, everything is just, everything pops more. Um, and it kind of has this effect. Now, let me sh try to show you. Um, you see right here actually has the names of the people you're talking to, to the left and to the right of the conversation. So you can kind of like go to the next conversation and see who's there uh, without actually opening the conversation. Just kind of a cool UI effect that they added on there. Um, it seems like Honeycomb is going to be doing that because Google Plus, the, the new Google Plus is the same thing now. Um, once you're in there, um, stream. And then from here, you can go to all circles, incoming, just by flicking left and right. It seems like uh, that's the approach they're going. They're gonna go have these kind of, not really breadcrumbs, but they kind of have these little little previews of, of what's to come if you go left or if you go right. Um, just, just, I don't know, it's just really cool for them to have. Um, like I said, once again, there's nothing groundbreaking but it's just everything works as it should. Everything works to be really quick, really sleek, and just seems like it integrates really, really well. Um, they want you to use Google Plus for a lot of things. I mean, if you open up a, a file, the first option you have will be Gmail, then Google Plus, then whatever else you add. Um, looks like Google is really pushing this Plus program. So we'll see. Um, YouTube, same thing. You can browse between the three. You can go home. Oh, that's my account. You can go home, browse, and use flick between the two. No big deal. Um, like I said, everything is just cleaner, smoother, sleeker, faster. Um, I'm probably missing something, but this is just a really quick video just to show you guys the, the ins and outs of, of Honeycomb, the, the first couple things you can do with Honeycomb. And, uh, and that's about it. I know there's plenty more that I forgot to show. Um, oh, I just remembered, Never mind. Um, you can take a screenshot at any time by holding the power button down and the down arrow at the same time. Yeah, I need to get my timing down to be honest. My timing isn't the greatest. But uh, you can go here to view your screenshot or you can get rid of it. Um, to get rid of notifications, you just flick them away. Like this, go away. No notifications are here. And also, um, you can actually do your notifications while the phone is locked. So let's say you're out somewhere, you're at work at a meeting, you have a notification, the phone is locked. You can drag down still and get rid of it. So your phone will stop notifying you of a notification or stop stop the light from flashing and things like that. It's just, it seems like it's just much nicer. There's more refined user interface and things like that. Um, the voice connect is really good though as far as like text messaging and um, writing people and things like that. Um, it's really nice. So let me show you for an example. This is gonna be live, so bear with me here. Hello world, comma. This is Kevin, midnight, whatever you wanna call me, period. This is a live broadcast of my YouTube video, period. I have no idea what I am talking about, exclamation mark. However, I am excited about this, period. This is going to be really cool, and this voice to text thing is really nice. 